Hi guys, I'm Leo from MediaWay and today we're going to create this beautiful product animation inspired by the Apple adverts in just a few minutes using only three assets. We're going to cover three point lighting, animating your models, the camera, render settings and hopefully you'll pick up some pro tips on the way. The first thing we're going to do is head on over to blenderkit.com then click download Blender Kit if you have, don't have it already. There's actually instructions here on how to install it using your preferences. Go to add-ons, click install, find the Blender Kit file you've just downloaded and then make sure it's enabled by clicking this little box there. Now I'm just gonna head on over into Blender. Click new file, general. Um, you can press A to select everything and then press X to delete everything. The other thing you can do, if you go to preferences, edit preferences, there's a great little um, add-on called Try Lighting. You just make sure that's, in, that's enabled. It's automatically uh, included with Blender, so you don't need to install it. Just make sure it's enabled. It's going to be really useful in a minute. Press N on the keyboard and click on Blender Kit. Then search for AirPods. If you just click on this once, it'll automatically import it into the origin here. Now everything in Blender Kit is parented to an empty, so you can actually grab it by clicking the sort of the empty. You can also scale it, so we're going to press S to scale and then press number five to scale it five times larger. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add an empty. So shift and A, empty, make it anything you want. I'm going to make it a cube. S to scale it down, I just want it just a bit bigger. G to grab, Z to move it up on the X axis. I just want this really just to be in the middle of the AirPod, AirPods case. This is going to be our target for our lights. So with the empty still selected, press Shift A, add lights, and you can see three point lights is now an option because you've enabled it in the preferences. If you do a little, this little dial up on the left, you can actually see, we'll take the height of the light, let's just show you this. So it's automatically added three lights to the scene. It's usually a, a front light, a fill light, and a back light, or a rim light. So you can actually adjust the height of them with this controller. Now I'm just gonna get them, just press one in the viewport, sorry. Just press one on the number pad. I'm just gonna get the height so it's pretty much parallel with the empty we've just added. And the distance, we want them to be much closer, so maybe around, maybe around one meter. So now they're focused on the AirPod. We're just gonna increase the base energy to five. This basically will set some of the lights to five watts. Right, so now, what, what's interesting about this trial lighting setup is if the empty you made, if you just press G to grab it, you actually see the lights automatically follow wherever you put empty. It's a really great way, instead of having to mess around rotating all the lights to align with your subject, it's a really quick and easy way to do it. So I'm gonna press seven on the number pad to go into top view. I'm gonna press, select one of these lights at the front, I'm gonna press G to grab it, and I roughly want this to be at a 45 degree angle to the front, and you can actually see that because it intersects with the corners of the grid. Same with this one, G to grab, 45 is just there. All right, we're gonna set these to make sure that they're both five watts. So click the lights, then make sure this is selected here, object data properties, and check the power set to five watts on both of those. This other light, we're gonna set that to 10 watts. And I'm gonna press seven again for top view. This back light, I'm gonna grab it, press G, move it over the center. And then we're going to just move around to the front view, grab it again with G, press Z to go up the front. We're gonna have it above the, I, the AirPods. And I'm just gonna scale it just so it's a bit larger. So just press S to scale, a little bit larger. And these two lights here, uh, we're going to press S to scale, Z to scale on the Z axis, and we're just going to drag them up a bit. 
just show you in here. Yeah, so the scale to 3.685, if that's important. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, let's just quickly set up the render properties. I'm gonna switch the render engine to cycles. Make sure it's set to GPU compute. We'll have denoising on. Maximum samples is 32 in the viewport, 64 for the render. And we're also going to change the color management while we're here. We're just going to change the look to very high contrast. Okay, so we'll hop into render view. You can see we're already starting to get something that looks pretty smart. So the next thing we want to do is add a camera. So if you press Shift A, add in a camera. We're just going to reset the rotation by pressing Alt and R. And then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Move it back a bit. So if you press Nort on the number pad, ooh, have we got two cameras? Let's delete the original camera. The new camera we've just added, press Nort. And then we're just going to increase the Z location. So it just about frames that in the center for now. Okay, so the final thing we're going to do now is actually add in a background. So if you press Nort at the minute, you can see the background's kind of just a dark gray. That's due to the world lighting. In fact, what we'll do, we'll, if you click here, the world properties, just turn the world lighting to zero. That'll make the background black. Press Shift and A, we're gonna add in a mesh plane as a background cube. Rotate with R, then X on the X axis, then 90. So R, X, and 90, that rotates it 90 degrees. G to grab, Y to move it back. Let's move it back quite far. In fact, we might move it back. I'll show you in a minute. Let's, let's just do this bit first. So in the camera view, you can see we've kind of got quite a dark light and we actually want this to be plain white. So we're gonna add a new material to this plane and we're gonna call it emission. Instead of principal BSDF, switch to emission shader. And we're just going to turn the strength up to 1.5. Okay, so this gives us a very nice white background with no shadows, reflections, or anything. Um, so what it's actually doing is emitting light itself. That's what it's called an emission. And you can see if we move it clear, closer, you can actually see it lighting up the headphones. So you don't want it to be lighting the headphones too much. So move it, press G and grab it on the Y axis. Let's move it quite far back. So we've got quite still nice, quite a nice dark shadow on this side because that's going to be important. Not to go into camera view. I'm going to just press S to scale with the plane selected and let's just cover it so it covers the whole background. Right, if you haven't saved yet, let's save it here. File, save, press F12 to do a quick render. Okay, it's already looking nice. So what you'll notice, we can actually press G to grab, Z to move these headphones up. You can actually see see what the headphones look like. I'll just rotate them around a little bit so you can see this is quite a nice little model, this. So what we're gonna do now is move on to the next step, which is actually animating these headphones. Right, first thing we're going to do to set up the animation is change the keyframes. So there's 150 keyframes. So we're gonna click on end frame down here, set that to 150. That gives us 150 frames for our whole animation. Okay, so what we've got, we've kind of got, let me just try and um, change some of these. Let's just, uh, we're gonna hide the lights for now, just so they're not in the way. Okay, so we've got an empty here, which basically controls the whole of the AirBuds and the case. Right, I'll just press escape to get rid of that. And then we've got separate controls. We can press G to grab the headphones. We've also got the lid, which you can control separately. So we've kind of got all these different elements here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set keyframes for each different element to animate them through the animation. So press zero on your number pad for camera view. And we're going to go to a frame 120. We're gonna click on the empty for the case. I'm just gonna press G to grab just to show you that just moves the case and the earphones. And we're gonna press I 
and we're going to set a location and rotation keyframe for that at frame 120. And we're also going to set um, a location and rotation keyframe for both of the headphones at frame 120 as well. Okay, let's just move that up a bit so we can see that. So basically what that means is at 120, frame 120, that is the position for all of these items. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to frame 95, just pop back into camera view with zero, click on the case empty, press G to grab, Z to constrain to the Z axis, and just move this out of frame so we can't see it. And then we're going to press I to set a location and rotation keyframe there. And now you'll see as we move from frame 95 to 120, the case moves between those two keyframe positions. At frame 95, we're going to move, click both of the headphones, press G to grab, Z to move up to the Z axis. And we're going to move them up to roughly the center and press I, and we're going to have location and rotation keyframes there. So now, the headphones will stay more or less in place and just move gently into the case. At frame 120, we can click on the lid and you'll see if we press the N key, you can actually see here the rotation of the lid's already been set to minus 97 degrees. So we can actually set a keyframe at frame 120. If you right click on the rotation just there and put insert single keyframe and then move to frame 135 and set this rotation, in fact you can see just how the this part of the case closes. We set it to zero and then right click again and insert another single keyframe. You'll see we've got two keyframes now down here and they control the opening and the closing of the lid. All right, if you press zero to go back into camera view, what I want to do is have the camera to be fairly a bit close to the headphones and then zoom out to this position when we see the case at the end. So basically, I think what we'll do, at frame 95, we're going to, if you click on the camera, we're gonna set the focal length to 50 millimeters, which is what it is at the minute. And you actually click on that to make a keyframe on the focal length. And then if we slide back, maybe to frame 60, we'll set the focal length to something like 75 millimeters, and we'll click the keyframe icon again. So now you can see we've got two keyframes here. So the camera focal length basically zooms in for a start and zooms out there, case moves up and the lid closes. Okay, so the last thing we're going to animate is the actual headphones themselves. We're gonna have them rotating around into the frame just to make it a bit more interesting at the start. So at frame one, grab both of your headphones, press G, press Z, to constrain to the z-axis, just move them up outside the camera frame. Press I to insert a location and rotation keyframe. In fact, let's change that up a bit. I'm going to have this one. Let's just move this in a little bit. Let's go to rendered view, because then we can see the lighting. Oh, I've got to switch the lights back on. And we're going to grab this headphone on the right. We're going to grab it, press Y to move in the Y axis. You'll see the further away we move it, the out of the light source it goes. So we're just gonna move it a little bit forward, maybe to about there, and perhaps we can do, move this one slightly backwards. G to grab Y to the Y axis, just move it back a bit. And let's just move it across a bit as well. So G to grab X for the X axis, move it across a little bit here. And the right headphone, G to grab X for the X axis, just move it across a little bit there. G. Z, just move it out of frame. Let's just update those keyframes so you can select them both. Press I, location and rotation. So that's the starting point for the headphones. So actually you'll see they already move very slowly into position, but we're gonna make that just a little bit more interesting. So we'll have the, have them both come into frame by frame 30. So G to grab, Z to move them down. I for location and rotation. And maybe what we'll do, we'll also rotate them um, as they're coming down. So let's go back to frame one. Let me just zoom out so you can see a bit better. We're going to change the Z rotation so they rotate. So we're gonna set this one to 360. Right click, replace single keyframe. Set this one to minus 360. 
right click replace single keyframe and now you'll see as they come into position they're actually rotating around so we can see them sort of rotate as they come down which is quite nice the next thing we could maybe do is have them rotate again as they come back to this position so let's um, set this one here to maybe frame 80 and we'll have that one rotate 360 degrees again insert single keyframe so it kind of gives you a chance to look at the products and this one here we'll have rotating maybe to frame 60 uh, which way did he come from 360 so he can go to minus 360 and we'll insert a single keyframe here so now as we press play headphones rotate and go back into the box as the box closes nice and neat just like that okay so we're going to render this out so go to your render settings just quickly have a look through here 64 frames for render you also might want to look under here the format we're going to set the frame rate to 25 frames um, we're going to set the output um, to uh, FFmpeg video the encoding needs to go to mpeg4 video codec you can set it to perceptually lossless at the output quality and then just choose a place to save it on your computer hit accept then hit render animation once you've got to this stage it's pretty easy to come up with variations try changing the background color of the plane to black or another color If you've got any more suggestions for video tutorials, pop them down below. See you in the next one.